everyone welcome back to my channel today we're gonna get into the new Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk lip and cheek tints we are going to be doing a try on comparisons price breakdown compared to some of the other cream blushes that are out on the market. I'm going to try to cover as much as I possibly can in this video just so that you guys know exactly what you're getting when you buy these because these are pretty expensive. There are two shades in this collection. It is Color of Passion and Color of Dreams. So she recently launched these on her website exclusively and they say that they're limited edition. Who knows what Charlotte Tilbury will do. This one is Color of Dreams, and Color of Dreams is just a little bit of a lighter shade. And then she released Color of Passion, which is just a little bit darker. Now, you all know that I am a huge Charlotte Tilbury fan. A lot of her products are products that I use on a regular daily basis. I just love her brand, I love her products. I'm also very critical because it's very expensive. So in the video, I'm gonna break it all down just so you guys can get a really good idea about what you are getting when you buy these. But before we get into the application, I want to break down the price so that you guys know just how expensive these are. Now, when these were launched on the website, there was no, no information on how much you got. And that is very frustrating as a consumer. I know that a lot of us buy products because we love the brand. I think these brands get a little bit arrogant thinking, I can just put what out, I can put out whatever I want. I don't need to tell you how much you're getting for your money. You love my product, so just don't worry about it. I, I kind of feel that way. And I didn't really like that, that there was no information on how much you got. So this is very small. You get 0 0.08 ounces, which is 2.5 grams. 2.5 grams for $40. So they're very expensive. I had a feeling that they were this size. In fact, I think I had told one of my friends that I had a feeling it was the size of this, which this is a color corrector. She has a couple of shades of these color correctors. The, you know, the color correctors, you're supposed to put it on your eyes. It does do a great job and you only need a little bit. There is, therein lies the difference. With this, you only wanna use a little bit underneath your concealer just to kind of color correct. This is also the exact same size as these, the exact same size. This is 2.5 grams, which is 0 0.08 ounces. So I kind of called it. I had a feeling based on the images that it was going to be the exact same size as this. And sadly, I was right. So that is very frustrating. As a consumer, these are very, very expensive bottom line. But therein lies, are they worth it? You know, are they going to be worth it? Is there anything about this formula that stands out and makes it worth that price? I have a lot of cream blushes in my collection because I've been kind of obsessed with cream blushes recently. So I have a lot in my collection. I will be comparing them a lot. In my final thoughts, I will kind of go through all of that and give you guys the breakdown if I feel like this formula is anything different than we, what we already have that's out on the market that's really good, that I've been obsessed with. So for now, we're just gonna jump into the price comparisons. So the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow, they retail for $40. You get 0 0.08 ounces, which is 2.5 grams worth of product. That makes it a whopping $14.29 per gram. The Fenty Cream Blushes, they retail for $20 each. They are 0.10 ounces, three grams worth of product. That makes them $6.67 per gram. Let's talk about the new Patrick Ta Double Take Blush Duos. You guys know I have recently fallen madly in love with these. One of my newest favorite beloved blush. I'm, a, I'm obsessed with blush, you guys know I am. And this has been like my holy grail. These retail for $34. In the cream part, I'm only gonna base it on the cream part. It's not fair to do the entire palette. The cream part, 
is 0.21 ounces, which is six grams, that makes them $2.83 per gram. Remember, the Charlotte Tilbury is $14.29. I also have this one from Tower Beauty. This is their Beach Please Cream Blushes. These actually retail for $20. They are 0.15 ounces, which is 4.5 grams. They are $4.44 per gram. I have fallen head over heels for this cream blush from Honest Beauty. It's one of my favorites. I love this cream blush so much. So the Honest Beauty cream blush retails for $12.99. They have 0.10 ounces, which is three grams worth of product. They are $4.33 per gram. So I recently picked this up. This is brand new on the Sephora website. I actually just got this box today, so I have not used it. So I can't tell you how this product works, but I wanted to include it in the price breakdown in case this was on your radar to pick up at Sephora. So these are a double take. So the first layer is the cream for the blush, and then the second layer is for your lips. Okay, so it's clear. So when I did the price comparison, I only did it on the top portion, which is the cream blush. So these retail for $22, and the top cream blush is 0.07 ounces, which is 2.1 grams. That makes this $10.48 per gram. And then finally, I wanted to compare it to this nude sticks. Somebody had reached out and said, hey, compare it to the nude sticks. And I thought that was a great idea because sometimes I forget about this cream blush. So I have this one in the shade Sunset Strip. This retails for $32. You get 0.25 ounces, which is seven grams worth of product. That makes it $4.57 per gram. In the Fenty cream blush video that I created, I also compared this to one of the more expensive ones on the Sephora website, which was the Lila B. This is the Lila B Divine Duo Lip and Cheek Blush. It retails for $46. You get 0.08 ounces, which is 2.2 grams. That makes it $20.90. So now that we have the price breakdown, let's go ahead and jump into the application so you guys can see what it looks like, how I apply it, the techniques that I use to apply it. Then when we come back, I will get into the comparisons. So you guys can see the shades next to some of the other cream blushes shades that I have in my collection. Then we'll get into my final thoughts. So without further ado, let's jump right into the application. Okay, so my Charlotte Tilbury package has finally arrived. It is 5.30, almost six o'clock at night. It's gonna be a long day. So this is the front of them. As you can see, that's what they look like in the front. And then when you open it up, now this is the shade Color of Dreams. This is Color of Passion, so this is the darker one. And then this is Color of Dreams. So this is Color of Dreams, and this is Color of Passion. This is the lighter one, this is the darker one. Just so you, hopefully it will pull it up. Um, let me get the right lighting. So this is Color of Dreams, and then this is Color of Passion. So obviously Color of Passion is a little bit darker than Color of Dreams. I have all my makeup on except for all I have right here is foundation and concealer. Like I haven't put bronzer, contour, or anything like that on because I don't want anything to take away from the color of these. Like I just want you guys to see what these actually just look like without blending them over top of other stuff. So, so on one side of the face, I think I'm gonna use a sponge and on the other, I'm gonna use a brush uh, just so that we can kind of get an idea of how these apply and I might go over top of it. Like I wanna do a few layers of it to see how deep they can go. So maybe like the second and third layer, maybe I'll put it on with like my fingertips or something. First, I wanna put this on my lips. So I'm gonna put a uh, color of passion, which is the darker one on my lip. Now I doubt these are gonna last very long on the lips. So just, you know, take that for what that's worth. But it is really pretty like, flush of color just to kind of match what you have going on on your face. I'm gonna put the lighter one, which is Color of Dreams, on this side with a brush. So I'm just gonna go in, I've grabbed some. Okay, 
Okay, so that's one layer. Like that looks really pretty. So that was just one little dip. What I can tell you is that this does feel pretty pigmented as far as, you know, like you don't have to work very hard to get the pigment to come up because it does seem like it comes up pretty quickly. So then I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna go into the darker one, which is Color of Passion. And I just dipped in, you can see it. I went like this just one time. I'm gonna kind of like take the foundation side and just kind of blend that in to my, it's not how many harsh edges. I'm really into the cream blushes, but the thing that you have to be mindful is to just make sure that you go over it um, with like a sponge or something just to kind of blend the edges into the skin so you don't have any harsh lines. You don't want any harsh lines. I prefer applying stuff like this with my natural hair brush. This is my refer number four brush. I don't know why. I just like the more control I have. I feel like with a sponge, I don't have the, quite the control that I want. Um, but it's, you know, everybody's different. So on my skin tone, you know, I'm a medium with like a golden. Right now I'm actually wearing the Pat McGrath shade number 15, uh, as far as foundation goes. So I would definitely say there's not a lot of differences between these two uh, once you put them on. Only that you're probably gonna get a little bit more depth with the darker one. The lighter one, I feel like maybe the more that you layer it, the more pink it becomes, but I don't know that it will become darker per se, but we're gonna try it. Let's take the lighter one. So let's take Color of Dreams, and I'm gonna just take my fingertip like this and just kind of like tap it into my skin and see it feels a little tacky, but it kind of, it's not like, it's not super greasy. It does have a nice highlight to it, but it, I wouldn't say it's shimmery. But it does give a little bit of a a little bit of a, a shine to the skin. And I don't really feel like it's lifting my foundation or anything. That looks really pretty. I kind of like this side better. I feel like this side is just a little bit more light and just kind of toned down. This side is just like, wow, like you, you, you have blush on, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now I did wake up with a little teeny pimple right here and I don't really feel like this is emphasizing the pimple at all. Kind of just blends in to the point where I don't know that it, you really notice it. So it's been sitting on my skin for probably about five minutes now. And what I like about this is that I feel like you can apply it any way you want and I feel like you're gonna get decent results. Whether you apply it with your finger, your sponge, your brush, whatever works for you, I think this is kind of workable with whatever technique you wanna use. I don't feel like any technique makes it better or worse. I think it's just what you're comfortable with. If you already have cream blushes and you have a favorite way of applying your cream cream blushes, I think will totally work with this. I don't feel like this is hard to use at all. I also feel like this is very pigmented. So be mindful of the fact that go in kind of lightly until you get used to the formula because these are pretty pigmented. These are much more pigmented than the Fenty blushes, which I will get into the comparisons later on because I have a lot to say about that. It's a little bit tacky five minutes later. Um, so you might want to go over it just with a light dust of powder if you want to set it. But if you're somebody that just likes that fresh look, I don't know that you're going to need to set it. But if you're going to be wearing a mask all day, you're probably going to want to set this because it does stay tacky on the skin. I'm going to put a mask on and off. You're going to need to put something over top of this to set it in place. I don't feel like this formula is tacky in a way that... I don't think it's going to disrupt anything underneath it. So for example, if you're wearing the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer underneath this and you went over top of it with this, I don't think it's going to disrupt the bronzer. This is a very nice formula. I have a lot of cream blushes and only a few I've had that disrupt underneath. And the ones that I have that disrupt any product that's underneath is the Fenty ones, only because I have to build them. And I think the more that you apply and the more that you are, you know, putting your brush or your sponge or whatever over top, and the more that you have to build, 
the more your chances are going to increase of disrupting what's ever underneath them. Because these are pretty pigmented from the gate, you probably only need one application and you're done. So one application is not going to disrupt what's underneath it. If you had a Charlotte Tilbury blush that you love and you wanna add a little bit of the cream, kind of like the Patrick Toss system, and you wanted to add a little bit of cream to bring it to life, like let's just say that you have the Pillow Talk blush. Maybe it's one of your favorite blushes that you have. Uh, I don't. I, I totally think that you could take one of these cream blushes and go over top of it and kind of bring it to life, similar to the Patrick Ta, because I feel like the cream formula is very similar in the way that it applies and the way that it feels based on just the texture of them, like when you roll them in between your fingers, they both formulas in the cream, Patrick Ta and this Charlotte Tilbury, they feel very, very similar. So I feel like you could totally do that with these. So I'm gonna go off of here, finish the rest of my makeup, come back, and we're gonna get into all the comparisons of all the cream blushes that I have, and then I will get into my final thoughts. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the comparisons before I get into my final thoughts. So the first picture up here on the screen is of a few products that I have from Charlotte Tilbury that you can apply on the cheek. So of course the first two swatches are, you know, the Colors of Dreams and the Color of Passion. Those are the two new shades. And then right below it is the Pillow Talk Beauty Wand in medium number two. Now don't get me wrong, that's not really made to be over blush. Um, but it is in that Pillow Talk family. Some people apply it over their blush. They'll take a tiny bit and pop it over the top of their blush, or you can put it on the high points of your cheeks as a highlighter, depending on your skin tone. Uh, but I do think that this Pillow Talk 2 one, the medium two, would be really beautiful over the color of passion. So maybe putting the color of passion on and then putting that over top would be really beautiful. And then right below it is the beach sticks. Uh, now I don't know if these are discontinued. I've heard that they are, but I have loved her beach sticks. They're stupidly expensive. I used them all summer long last year and I never went through it. I have the shade Moon Beach, which is very shimmery on the cheek, but so, so soft and subtle and beautiful. The next set of images is from some of the other cream blushes that I have of various different brands. Right below it is the nude stick in the shade Sunset Strip. And then right below it, we have the Honest Beauty in Coral Peach. And we have Tower 28 in Golden Hour. And then we have the new Wander Beauty Double Date. Let me get into the differences between the formulas that are up here on the screen. The nude stick is definitely more of a matte formula. It doesn't give you that really shine that you, that you see on my skin. This one is definitely more of a powdery type of formula where the ones from Charlotte Tilbury are more shiny. So they have more of a shiny type texture. Same thing goes for the one right below it, which is the Honest Beauty. This one is glossy. It's so pigmented. That's the other thing about this. Out of all of the cream blushes that I have, besides the nude stick, I think this is probably the most pigmented, meaning that you have to be really, really careful with how much you pick up. And sometimes I have to tap off on the back of my hand before going in, just because it's so pigmented. It has a glossy texture to it, but it also has a little bit of a chalky texture. I go into the Charlotte Tilbury and I go like this. See how it's a little bit more see-through? The one from Honest Beauty definitely has more of opacity to it, where when I swatch it, it is just straight color, straight pigment than these from Charlotte Tilbury. They're a little bit more uh, sheer-like, a little bit more glossy on the cheek than the Honest Beauty. I've been swatching and kind of feeling the textures and all of that. I would say that the Tower Beauty is probably the closest to the, to the same similar formula as the ones from Charlotte Tilbury, also the Patrick Ta. So the Tower Beauty has the same type of feeling when you apply them. Same with the Patrick Ta. So I would say the Patrick Ta, the Tower 28, and the Charlotte Tilbury, in my personal opinion, are pretty close to being very similar in formula wise. I feel like they apply very similar. They 
Obviously, the Patrick Ta is not as pigmented because it's made to be as a topper, but I'm just talking about the way that it applies and the way it looks on the skin. So it gives you that glossy look. Now, don't get me wrong. The ones from Fenty also give you a glossy look. The differences between the ones from Fenty, we're going to move to the next slide of pictures. This is the image of these next to the Fenty blushes. So as you see, the Fenty Rose Latte shade is so similar to the colors of Passion Shade. Like, if you have that shade, I would not even worry about buying these from Charlotte Tilbury because they're almost exactly the same shade. As you can see, it's not as pigmented, but it depends on what you like. There's a lot of people out there that absolutely love these cream blushes from Fenty. My biggest complaint with them is they just didn't have enough pigment. And that was the reason why I was like not in love with them. And I loved the formulas that I had in my collection more than the ones from Fenty only because I felt like I had to keep going in and building it and it would fade throughout the day and I would have to keep adding more. And then, like I said, in the application, the more you add, the more you run the risk of it lifting whatever is underneath it. Now, depending on how much you want to add, I love blush. I love blush. I want to look like I have blush on. There's a lot of people that don't want to look like they have blush on, but have it on. So it depends on what you like and what you don't like. I would say the difference between the Charlotte Tilbury and the Fenty is the Charlotte, I feel like they're the same texture and they have the same shine to them. So when you put the Fenty on, you get this shine, but the ones from Charlotte Tilbury are more pigmented. So this next image is of the cream blushes in the Patrick Ta duos next to the ones from Charlotte Tilbury. Now, obviously, the cream in the Patrick Todd Duo is not meant to be very pigmented because the powder blush is the pigment. The cream is just kind of the topper that brings it to life and gives you that glossy look. Personally, I'm going to be completely honest, I love the Patrick Ta formula far more than I do the Charlotte Tilbury, and that's just being honest. You can see that they do have the same type of shine, meaning that they have the same texture. They have the same texture as the Tower 28s, the Fenty Beauty. They have that real emollient base to them. And then when you apply them, they just, you know, bring the skin to life. So that's it on the shade swatches and the comparisons of the formulas. Let's go ahead and jump into my final thoughts. Okay, I don't think it's going to be very shocking or surprising about my final thoughts, but I do not think these are worth $40. They're beautiful, and I think if you bought them, you will enjoy them. I think they work beautifully. I think they apply beautifully. It's a very soft, pigmented formula that you don't need to add a lot to really get the payoff, but they're not worth $40. End of the day, they are not worth $40. I have all of these cream blushes sitting here on my table and I have so many on this table that are just as pigmented, just as easy to work with, just as beautiful on the skin as these are from Charlotte Tilbury. I am kind of disappointed in the fact that she priced these at $40. I personally would have been happy if they were at $30. I feel like at $30, it kind of gives her that you know, luxurious brand that she likes to be, uh, but doesn't jip the customer. I feel like these are jipping the customer. That's just, a, it. It is, it is what it is at the end of the day. If you have bought these, you will love them. I don't think that you will be disappointed in them at all. The formula is amazing. If you have not bought these and you have a lot of cream blushes in your collection, you don't need these. You do not need these. I'm, I can promise you, you do not need these. There are other products out on the market for $40 that you will get so much better use out of. In fact, if you have a lot of cream blushes, spend five more dollars and get her powder. Her powder is life-changing. Her powder is amazing. Like this, I cannot go without. I cannot go without this. So I would recommend you buying that over these cream blushes. I just think these are way, way, way too overpriced for what they are. Like I said, if they were $30, I would have been shouting from the rooftops, hallelujah, these are beautiful. You guys will love these. 
but I just, I cannot come on here and tell you that these are worth $40 because they are clearly not. They are not worth $14.29 per gram. There are so many beautiful, beautiful cream blushes out on the market. My favorite has been the Honest Beauty, which is pretty affordable, but I am here to tell you, these from Patrick Ta are mind-blowing how amazing these blushes are. They're probably one of the best inventions of blushes <laughs> that I have seen. I absolutely love these. I love that you have the powder to give you that pigment and then you can go into the cream and just make your skin just look so rich and buttery and beautiful, so healthy and radiant. I have been filming for probably three hours now. I have reapplied this lip stuff mm, several times, at least four or five times because and I haven't even been talking. Some of it I've been talking, but a lot of it has been playing with the textures, applying them, you know, kind of fiddling around. And I've had to reapply it several times to, because it it's just not going to be that long lasting on the lips. However, I don't really feel like the pigment has changed on my skin, on my cheeks. But these are ridiculously way overpriced way overpriced. You guys, save your hard-earned money. Let me buy them. Let me take the earnings from this channel and let me buy this stuff. Let me come on here and tell you, you do not need to buy them. Don't waste your hard-earned money on these. They're not worth it. There's so many great products out on the market that give you the same, same look for way less. This side is the lighter shade, and I do think that the lighter shade would be really pretty on fair skin as long as you go in very lightly. I think if you like a pink blush and a pink undertone blush, I think it'll be beautiful on your lighter skin tone. If you have a darker skin tone than I do, you might have to go in a few times with this darker one to get it to, to come up, but it will. But if you have a darker skin tone, I'm not telling you to go out and buy it. If you have a darker skin tone and you have already bought this, I would recommend getting the best payoff from this by applying it over your favorite blush. That's how I would wear it. I think you would get the best use out of it. I wanted to also mention that this my skin feels tacky, but not oily. So, you know, to maybe get rid of the tackiness, you could possibly go over it with a little bit of powder. I wouldn't do this with it. I would just maybe go like this. And that kind of gets rid of the tacky feeling, but there's still it's still a little bit of a tacky base, but they're not oily or sticky or anything like that. Now, because I got these so late in the day, they did not arrive until like 5.30. I'm not gonna be able to do a really long wear test. However, I will probably be up very late editing. So I will put right here at the bottom of the screen how long they lasted, like how long I had them on and if I felt like they faded during the time that I had them on. I will put that right here on the screen right now because I just don't know. As I continue to wear them throughout the week, I might, you know, add more information in the description box and the comment section and kind of just pin it just so that you guys know. So I hope this review was helpful. If you guys have bought them, sound off down below. Let me know how you guys are liking them. If you agree with me, if you're loving them, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope that you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys right back here tomorrow and I love you all so much. Bye!